Welcome to the second edition of Pod Watcher, the official podcast of Watcher Entertainment. I'm Ryan Bergara. I'm Shane Madej. And I'm Stephen Lim. And this is a space where we chat about whatever's on our minds every week. This week we dive into... <laughs> <laughs> what is your topic? I want to say that my topic this week was because this came up conversationally in a, a trip I went on this past weekend, and it's a joke structure that I thought was really funny. Oh, boy. And it's very immature. <laughs> this week we talk about... <laughs> this week we dive into these nuts. <laughs> Cruise ships. Cru- okay. And we'll be talking about married life. And who knows what else, whatever comes up. I, can, uh, I really can't get down with picking these topics at the top of an episode. You had a whole week. Yeah, but I just like talking, you know? We're going to talk, yeah. but you need to have something up top to tease. Okay, man. but I can... Okay, it's going to be pasta or cruise ships. <laughs> sure, yeah. Man, just or maybe pick, a third thing. Even if you only talk about pasta for a little bit, just to have something up top. Okay. These nuts. Pretty funny. We won't get into that. I, I just realized when you were saying that, that this podcast is your chance to take bits and go <laughs> way too far with them without... <laughs> Katie or Mark no or Annie. Yeah, the parents are gone. It's really funny. I, I just I, I don't know how it came up. You remember remember D's nuts when everyone was D's nuts and I I've Is never this gonna been be a fan. the extent of this conversation. <laughs> no, no, there's I some, remember D's nuts. There's some pretty funny <laughs> ones. And well, the, the thing is maybe I'll just sneak them into the podcast as we go and trying these nuts, you guys. It's I actually really tough. You, you, well, you, yeah, especially when you say I think I'm gonna try and D's nuts. I think you that's guys. why it would be more impressive if I can get you to do it. Oh, which, by the way, I just How do you usually set people up with that? I want to know what your... Do you do the thing? No, I'm not going to tell you. Do you go you... take the BOFA route? What's? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll do it for you, though. What's BOFA? Or BOFA D's nuts. <laughs> 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 it makes me... Are there la- other setups for it? Yeah, I only are. know about BOFA. Do you think it would be more entertaining if I just did some of the setups I have? Or do you think it would be more entertaining to actually try and get you to do it? Okay, them? I think they're going to be extremely... Um, glaring and obvious, but I will enter. I will. I will humor you, and when they do come up, I will ask in earnest. That's fair. Okay. What else do you want to say about that? <laughs> There's nothing else. That, <laughs> I just wanted. I just wanted to to bury it, just to just to establish it up top, so that I could trickle it throughout the episode. And maybe I might get some of the listeners. Maybe you'll get them. You'll get D's nutted from afar. This is a real banner week for Watcher Entertainment. We're going back on tour next week. Going to be excited for that. Yeah, we may be. Uh, and by the time this podcast comes out, it will or will not have happened, but we may be on the morning news in Minneapolis. We're, we're just, actually, I think I just got a message from <laughs> him right now. I'm be, I would be so excited. I said, I know Shane's always wanted to appear on local news. And he said, sweet Jesus, the fact that Shane has always wanted to appear on local news frightens me. <laughs> <laughs> I have visions of the old yo-yo man local news Oh gag. my God, I love yo-yo. <laughs> have that, you? Mark, that Mark Proch pulled at several stations. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know what that Wait, is. What happens Wait, we'll talk about that instead. Do you know Mark Proch? Proch? No, I don't know. He's on Shadows. He was in uh, Better Call Saul. He was on The Office, I think, for a little bit. Oh, cool. If you cool. saw him, you'd probably recognize him. Uh, Oh, okay. He yeah, did a yeah. thing that started like 10. It was before he was even on television. I think he was just like a comedian, but he went around to a bunch of local news stations all around America. Yeah. He said about 15. And billed himself as like, because, you know, they don't really, they didn't really vet people super well. Yeah. So he billed himself as this yo yo master who would go to schools and give motivational talks to children. Yeah. <laughs> and then he would show up and like do yo yo tricks for people. His name was Kenny Strasser, and he would just like, it would just, it would have like the sort of vibe of a motivational speaker, but he'd just like drop in subtle comments. He'd be like, well, I'm a child at heart, twice divorced. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) um, And then when he would actually do his yo-yo tricks, they were always horrible. (laughs) And the news anchors would be like, oh, okay. You know, trying to save (laughs) face on camera. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it was so good. But yeah, he's he's an incredibly funny guy. He's great on Shadows. He's my favorite character on that. I got to get on... uh it's what we do in the shadows, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just for the Matthew Barry. He of it plays all. a. I think you'd enjoy his character. He plays an energy vampire. Mm. So all the other vampires obviously suck blood, but he he gets energy from like awkward situations and making people <laughs> feel uncomfortable. <laughs> that so, sounds like me. So when he does that, his eyes just light up, and he's like, 
<laughs> I think I think that might be based off of me. It's really good. You guys haven't been on the morning news yet? No, I have not. Have you? We, for Worth It, were on the morning show. Oh, what'd you do? You were. What, yeah. Wait, which, wait on the you, morning? morning, morning show? Is that the what, Today what, Show? The Today Show. Who was hosting? I don't know my shows. Uh, Al Roker. You talked to Roker. We talked to Roker, and we ate food. With, I can't remember. What, I don't even remember this. Like I can't believe it. But I do remember he was so good. He's incredible. He's, Al Roker? He's he so good. nailed his lines. And I remember the producer was like, you want to do one more time? He's like, no, I'm out. <laughs> he just like walked out the door. I he's a professional, just, dude. I yeah. met him very briefly once when uh, my first year at BuzzFeed, we were shooting the red carpet at the Golden Globes and he was next to us yeah. with his camera set up and we were chit-chatting the whole night and he oh. was the friendliest guy. In the you should have pitched him shows. Nicest guy. I didn't have shows at that point. Like, well, you should have been like, I was like should... hi, I'm an intern at BuzzFeed. <laughs> you, should, you ever thought about doing a poker with Roker? Like a, Whoa! Like, a, like, a poker, like a poker show? Did you just come up with that? I did. Or what about Roker's Poker? Oh, that's actually- Roker's Poker? That's more a show where he kind of like tends he to a fire. You... He tends oh, to a okay. fire with Yo, like, like a, a fire like poker. Like a Yuletide log. Roker's Jokers? Where Roker's... he- He dresses up as a joker. Oh, I was going to say like people audition as stand-ups for him. That's uh, pretty like, good, too. Like jesters. He oh. hires a jester. These are the kind Joker. of gold ideas we could drop yeah. on him had yeah. you approached him. It's but true. I didn't too much. That. Well, Steven also had a chance, too, because at that point, he was more established. He That's was a true. guest on the show. I was scared of my mind, though. What was he like? What like, was, off camera? Well, actually, what was it like being on the Today Show? I care more about Roker, but answer that. I want to know about right. the Today Show in general. Both Who was both. there? Was Hoda there? Uh, was... No, no it, was, so it was actually not on the set. Oh, it though. was. We went oh, off never to mind. go eat uh, some food with Al Roker. You were on like location. A segment. Yeah, we were on location. But, I mean, he is he's the most delightful man. Really? Like, you can tell. Nice. Like, we were we, we were just like a bunch of guys eating gold, you know? So, it's like, you can't take it He finally seriously. says it. He finally admits what it was. But he took us... You know, he, he like treated us with respect. We're and that time it was like twenty sixteen. Internet content just wasn't really respected back then. Yeah. And it was so, not. But like he Still really isn't. cared about Still what we isn't. were doing. He knew it was a big thing. You know, you, you could tell he did his research too. Like he was reading lines about us and, and, and sure. Yeah. It was That's really nice. cool. It's nice to see that he actually cared. That um, was probably the coolest uh interview that we've done. He's also um He's responded to me on Twitter a few times because uh, we talked about him in one of the Unsolved episodes about how he malfunctioned. Oh, yeah, malfunctioning Roker. But that's just a bit he <laughs> In does. the Illuminati. He does that bit regularly on the Today Show. Not like all the time, but I've seen him do it at least three times where like <laughs> he knows he's in the background of a shot, so he'll just like freeze <laughs> like a robot. Um, Which I appreciate a lot because we do stuff like that to humor ourselves all yeah, the time. Yeah. We'll do this bit where we'll walk into a wall and keep walking yeah, like a sim. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times. You'll see that sometimes. When we're ghost hunting, we'll just walk off camera. And just, Has like, any of those walk at a wall for... and then just keep walking <laughs> you know when you're playing like a video game uh, how has that ever made it into an episode i don't think so we got to make sure it gets into it's one good stuff it's a great bit i'm glad to see that he's a, a nice man that delights me because it would be such a shame if he was a just a stinker he was telling me because we were talking about chefs too and how they, their lives are chef too extremely... starring john favreau <laughs> extremely <laughs> difficult as portrayed in you know the movies um but his daughter i think at the time was working at like google or you know one of those tech companies yeah and that is the optimal chef life he's very proud of his children very proud and he's talking about how like you you can work like whatever 10 to 5 get off work early have full benefits it's a great life for them i think he just wants the best for her. i watched i i really got into the today show he I loves mean, the Today Show. I love show. the Today Show. Actually, I haven't watched it in a long time because I got rid of We should my... get you on the Today Show. I would love I'd, to be. I think that'd be really fun. Would, I love the Today Show so much. It wouldn't be that hard. Uh, I, I don't think know. it would be we can make it You know, they do move people through pretty quick. They have like 30 guests every morning, so yeah. they probably could squeeze me in. <laughs> That's true. When we went to Universal Studios Orlando I got as a, a crew, it, Shane insisted that we go to the, the, the what is it? The Today, the today Show. Cafe. Why is it so hard to say? The Today Cafe. The Today Show cafe it's called the today cafe oh it is oh, he today insisted cafe. that we go there and uh, he bought a mug i bought a mug carried it around universal studios for the whole rest of the day with liquid in it <laughs> that's right uh it, it was a fun time roker though actually you know what we have an opportunity here this is the second episode of this podcast we could do something really spicy because we were talking about what just the most nonsensical things that you had to you had to do at buzzfeed and okay. i'm curious what was the most nonsensical interview that you had to do what was the other one we did? The uh, uh, Universal? What? When? 
the Universal Tower over by Universal Studios. Don't you remember? Oh my God! It was E News Pop. It was E News. It was E News Pop. It was like their show called Pop or whatever. <laughs> we did a spirit. We box. did a spirit. And the hosts were like, way. "What the fuck <laughs> is this?" <laughs> I remember that. That was so weird. Yeah. I uh, I was thrilled by it, though. It was I've very never, funny. Is, is that clip out there? I it's got to be this. out there. It was on YouTube for a little bit. Uh, it was... Uh, were we already see, doing actually. Watcher at that point? No, no, we were not. That, But I do recall that was in 2018, because I remember I was wearing this like blue and white shirt that I used to wear around that time all the time. And then I put it in the dryer, and it shrunk. Oh. And that's then, the worst feeling. And, and now I can't wear it anymore. Hold on. Let me type in BuzzFeed Unsolved. That's why you always buy two. <laughs> you buy two of everything? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, there was there was a, a bunch of silly ass things that we had to do back in the day, and I just remember that being one of them. The weirdest worth it promo that BuzzFeed ever put us through. You know, you know myself. Oh, okay, this is pre Big Apple Steve, so I used to never drink. Wait, never before party. we get into that story, though, let's take a break really quick. Oh, do we have sponsors on this show? I have no idea, but we'll find out in a second. See you later. And we're back. All right, now let's hear it. Okay, so... I mean, get into the lore real quick for people who may not know who Big Apple Steve is. A quick refresher. Yeah, what Actually, is... Big Apple Steve was coined by none other than Ryan Bergara. Well, that's true. But... Coined, popularized, and only spoken about by Ryan Bergara. That's not true. People speak about it to this day. I well, think it has some staying power. It's because you've said it so many times. That's right. So uh, you... Just what... like, what is Big Apple Steve? When, when did you move to New York? 2018? 2018? 2018, yeah. April. And I moved back to LA 2019 to start Watcher. Yeah. And if it wasn't for you two, I would never have moved back to this dumb old dump. I know you're not which, talking. Which I love now. You're not allowed to say house, you want your dogs. Man. You want your man. I love the it's grass a, here. I love Los Angeles. But um, yeah, pretty, pretty all that. I was a, you know, goody, good little boy. Didn't drink. Didn't party. Um, And, you know, Andrew and Adam too. They're, they're not the they're not party people either. Yeah, they're no, definitely not Adam. I guess Andrew you get a, you can get a drink I, with both I've, of them. I, but I've, I've gotten I've drunk seen with them Adam. both put it down. They oh they they put it down, but they don't yeah. go like clubbing. No, oh, they don't right. do that. But we've yeah. definitely been yeah. out there in the streets getting after it with yeah. the two of those guys. Yeah. Anyway, long story short, Buzzfeed spent like over a hundred grand to book out a club in New York what? for us to attend. And they like invited all. Yeah, what? Yeah, <laughs> they invited. And was it like a bottle service situation? It was like they. It was like a four-hour exclusive entry event for like all of their salespeople and marketing people, and whoever you know, to come and and like meet us, the worth it guys. Amazing. And imagine like we're all like it's like there's a DJ. Dude, I, don't, I don't remember where it was. It's but it fun was, like, to talk super to the. It's- Crazy. I, it's fun to talk to you, Adam and Andrew, when there's a, a DJ blasting music. I <laughs> oh, yeah. It was very weird. And then it was also like I had I don't think I, I think I'd never been to a club before or maybe once or twice. Yeah. It's just really strange. We're like getting people like buying drinks for us, even though it was just bringing drinks that were bought for by BuzzFeed to us. <laughs> Shane and I had a very similar event where they had billed it to me, and I think this is how they got me because they know that I am a Halloween fanatic, as you know, as our loyal listener out there has noticed, because uh, we talked about that the last podcast. If you're one of the listeners who's listened to every single episode of this show, which is you would know that last week Ryan said that in our only episode. That's right. You recall that I love mazes and Halloween and stuff like that. BuzzFeed knew this, so they were like, "Hey, what if we threw an activation for unsolved fans in which it was like a." in-person event where you had like sets and stuff uh and it was like kind of like a horror themed almost like an unsolved maze of sorts and so i was like thrilled i thought this was the greatest thing ever we get closer to it and we find out that it was like age gated like you you had to well, be they told us yeah like it was going to be a thing where fans could come yes. and register and it would be a fun thing and then yeah they were like it turns out no one under the age of 21 can come and we were like, okay, that's fine. But then they did they invite any fans? I, they didn't. They did not. It was only just marketing folks. It was just marketing, and oh we boy. spoke. We spoke to absolutely zero of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, because the, the idea was they would trot Shane and I it was around. So weird. And that they would, uh, and that we would then talk to all these folks, and then it seemed like, and it seemed like nobody there knew who we were. <laughs> they were just like, I don't know what they were doing there. It was probably a lot of New York BuzzFeed people. There was one other person who I talked to there who worked on the Today Show. And I was like, I'd love to get on there. <laughs> um, that was it, the entire night. And everyone we talked to, I was like, I don't think any of these people know who we are. No one really talked to us that it, much. It was a bizarre thing where they clearly had just emptied out the Rolodex of every uh, 
uh, of every, you know, marketing person or salesperson that they knew. And I bet none of them vetted what it was before they came. So they were, they were there basically for the free drinks. And it was yeah. a bizarre thing to be in a place where nobody knew who Shane and I were when they were trying to sell that. And like our was, names were on the screen. And there was video screens <laughs> all around playing clips of us. And they were probably like, what's going on here? It was very awkward. I th honestly thought the Halloween event that was catered to us was going to be the highlight of that trip. But the highlights were going to the zoo. That's right. And then uh, going to Jekyll and Hyde's and uh, a karaoke bar after that. Oh, my God. I do remember that. You sang uh, Jump in the Line by uh -huh. Harry Balfontaine. Yeah, we had a great time. And didn't we also? We took a funny picture outside that event, too. It's the one where we're like kind of like not hugging, but our arms are extended. Oh, yeah. We're, we were trying to reproduce from memory. There's a funny picture of uh, Harrison Ford and Billy T. Williams oh, no, doing no, a very no. funny like sort of half hug slash yeah. handshake. Uh, it cracks me up. Now, let's get into. Let's talk about cruise ships. Cruise ships? I've never been on one. What That's they, all you have to say about cruise what, ships? What are they like? <laughs> the only the only context I have for cruise ships is that horrible video of the elevator full of blood. That's a thing. Have yeah. you ever been on a you you've never been Do you on want, a cruise? You don't ship? want to elaborate him to Am elaborate. I the on? only one who's been on a cruise ship here? I've never been on a cruise. I've never been on a cruise what? ship. What? I just always thought they were kind of tacky. They seem gross. And then no, people No, I hated it. Uh cuz what was that one? Was it a carnival that got stuck out in the in the Gulf, and then people oh, were like gosh. pooping in ice buckets yeah. and stuff. That sounds crazy. That's what happened. I think it's a carnival one. It's like a and fire people always get sick on them. It just, I don't like the idea of being locked into a, a space for that long. Where did you take a cruise? Uh, in Florida. Florida? Oh, I remember Jesus. where. Like, yeah, we just got on a cruise. Talk about a double whammy there. Yikes. You're on a cruise and you're in Florida. But like, you're spending money to be enclosed. On the ocean, I don't want to do that. I, I'm not going. I, I want to spend money to go somewhere, experience the city, yeah, and not be stuck. Like well, the travel part is not the fun part. The ones on the west coast that go up to like Alaska, those seem fun. The one weird thing about cruise ships is, and I, I'm not by any means famous, um, but there no, was Stephen. I think you're famous. come on, man. There was one person <laughs> fishing, who fishing. Now you guys would agree that I'm not famous. I am not yeah, famous is that what you would say? I a nice little pause after you, you that. You wouldn't too. disagree with me on this, would <laughs> now, you? No. If you were just rating feel free to disagree, me on my, but on my fame levels. Um, no, but there was one person who was obsessed with worth it, and I love. I I appreciate that, but I think it got a little bit weird. <laughs> and the thing about a cruise much. ship is you you can't you never leave nowhere to go. You're stuck on the boat with them, and so every day. Uh, he'd want to hang out. Get some scramby eggs we, together we at, the, at the bit, breakfast buffet. But I'm there to relax and vacation and be away from work. Yeah, you don't want that. It's, it's just like you're you're really stuck with the people that you're. I don't with. like it when you're at like a hotel on vacation and you like maybe have a funny exchange with someone in the elevator, but then you see them again later. It's like, don't haunt me. If you got to go on a cruise for free, would you do it? Mm, Honestly, I don't think I would. No, me I don't neither. think so. Because we have been offered that. That was actually a BuzzFeed thing, too, if you remember. It was like some virgin cruise. Ooh. The, the airline, not like... No, I know what you're a, saying. <laughs> and I was like, Shane's like, well, I wouldn't be able to get on that board. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the Madeys. I out. swear. <laughs> <laughs> they not, wouldn't let me on. No, they wouldn't let Mangler Madey on there. <laughs> um, the one kind of cruise that I would want to go on, and I assume it's too expensive to actually do, but I remember like deep in the pandemic, Sarah and I would always see these commercials for river cruises where you're it's not like a full mm. cruise ship it's like mm. a it's like a giant yacht that people rent rooms on on a river on a river nice. and it there was one that traveled up and down the the i, I think i'm pronouncing it probably incorrectly the Danube, the colorado river the danube the danube <laughs> and you would go to a bunch of christmas markets that uh, sounds nice yeah and i thought now that would be fun but I wonder if Christmas markets would get sort of old after. I don't think so. A week. Amari and I love going to small, quaint towns, Isn't and they that nice? and they all look the same. Yeah. But I'm always charmed by them for a week, though. Oh wait, oh for a week? No, I don't know about that. But spending a day or two in each one, like yeah, when we cool. were in, uh, we went to France over the summer for our anniversary trip, and one of the things we did was we. This was actually a, actually kind of a dumb idea, but uh, oh, let's hear it. We decided that we would bike from Nice 
to Monaco and then stop along all the little seaside cities along Gotta the way. Got to be pretty hilly, huh? Well, we certainly didn't anticipate that. <laughs> and I'm not, France. I, I'm not Every here to- picture you see of France, it's just like a thousand hills in one frame. I'm not here to grind this axe, but I guess let's grind it. I, I mentioned to Mari- Oh boy. Because it was a 16 mile ride. And I was like, hey, I think this is maybe a bad idea. I, don't th- I think we're going to get pretty tired. And I said that without knowing there were hills. But so when she, you know- Pushed back and was like, no, I think we should do it. It'll be fun. We could get out, get some exercise in, see these towns. And I was like, you know what? You're right. So we do it. And of course, it is just nothing but hills that entire time. And Mari had that thing where, you know, when you, you're you the one suggesting something and you don't want to be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so she was just muscling through it. And I was too. And it was a lot. And we, it was fine. It was a lot. It took way longer than we thought. We were all hot and sweaty going into Monaco. And we had stopped at all these like nice little cities along the way, which were great. But when we got to Monaco, we had not. And this was my mess up. I will admit this. When I looked at the route, there are these. Uh, you, you see these in all these kinds of cities, like these metro bikes that you could kind of like yeah, rent yeah, from yeah. the little stations. And I looked up, are there metro bikes in Monaco? And there were. Oh, Do they have pedal- no. And so. Oh, no. And they have so, pedal assist? And no, they don't. Just oh. regular bikes. So we biked it. We take our, our our little niece bike, which was blue, and we ride down to Monaco, and we get there hours later. We're exhausted and sweaty, and we're like, all right, let's just dock this bike and then go eat. And we look over at the docks, Jeez. and they're red. And we were like, oh, that's Jeez. weird. We go put our bikes in, and they just don't click in. And I'm like, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> and then Mari was like, well, you checked to see if there were stations here. And I was like, yeah, I did. Let's just try this again. It doesn't click. And I'm just like, oh, well, <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> and I was what like, what did you end up doing? And actually, there was um, this lady who walked by and she was like, whoa, what a you, blue bike, blue bike. What are you doing over here? And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> we, do, we haven't seen a blue bike. In exactly. Years. She was like, those but don't, French. she was like, these, those don't work over here. And I was like, Oh, because the plan was to dock the bike, ride the train back for our dinner, which was our fancy dinner of the trip. It was like a Michelin star restaurant. Something you wouldn't want to be really sweaty. For. No, and something that we, if we missed, we <laughs> would be charged. you want to be there for. <laughs> Here, here's the stakes, too. If we miss this dinner, we have to pay $300. Ooh. And yeah. we were in Monaco at around 4 p.m. Oh, geez. And it had taken us three hours to bike there. And so we were just... I was I was not well. I and we were we were stressed. It was like the opposite of what we wanted the day to become. And we were like, you know what? Let's just take these bikes and take them onto the train. I don't know if we could do that, but we're just gonna do it. And if they stop us, they stop us. Uh we go over to the station, and the only way up to the station is up maybe like six flights of stairs. Uh, and so great. Mari looks at me and she goes, Welp. And she takes the bike, puts it over her shoulders, and just starts carrying it. And these bikes weigh a ton. (laughs) And we're just like dying going up these stairs. We get to the top. We get to the train station. Out in front of the train station, there's a big sign. You know how they have signs where it has like smoking and then has like the red thing crossed out? There was a picture of a bike with the red circle (laughs) crossing it out. Yeah. But to be fair, one of the people who worked at the station also was like, that's fine. And then we just kind of walked in, shoved our way into the train, and everyone hated us on that train. And uh, we just made it happen. But then we talked to some people, and they're like, people do this all the time. Oh, well, there, there, was a, there was people on there with scooters. French. Those scooters. Yeah. A lot of people spoke English, surprisingly. Uh, Monaco. Could you just look and see if there was like a charge for leaving the bike there? Uh, would it have been hundreds and hundreds It would of have been. Yeah, I looked that up as well. Yeah, it would yeah. have been registered as lost. Well, it sounds like you both screwed up in that one. Though, oh, yeah, so. we both did. So it sort of evened out, right? Yeah, she and we talked about that on the way back. She was like, well, I messed up in the sense that I didn't. I underestimated the ride, and you messed up in that you thought there were stations here. And we had a nice laugh about it over dinner. But there's a video I took of Mari in the train because it was packed, and the AC was broken in the train, and we were already sweaty, and we just oh, looked geez. miserable in that train. And it's a really funny video. It's one of my favorite videos I've ever taken. No, well, that's a fun story. And that was from my topic, cruises. Let's move on from cruises. But uh, let's take a little break again. All right. Hope we have a sponsor. I really hope be, so. That'd be very embarrassing. We can make one up. Yeah, we'll make up. We'll, we'll, we'll just plug our other show. We'll plug the podcast show. And in the podcast show, we'll plug this plug show. Plug this show in this show? It'll be an echo chamber. Uh, nice. Anyways, what's the uh, what's the next topic that we have here? Married life. Oh, Yeah. We already kind of delved into that. Well, I was, because last night I was with my wife driving home, Tammy. I don't, I don't, I don't know. 
Thanks for reminding me. Uh, <laughs> and healed some stuff. <laughs> and I was like, Tammy, what should we talk about on the podcast? And she's like, I don't know, whatever you want. And it's like, I guess I'll talk, I'll talk about you. Like, okay. <laughs> that sounds like you said that in spite. Like, you you were like, what should we talk about on the podcast? And she's like, I don't know. Fine. <laughs> you then. You <laughs> well, like that? It's funny because her response was like, oh, well, also, I won't be there to defend myself as an defend all yourself. attack her. Well, it's. I mean, I we, guess I did just attack Mari, but then I attacked myself. So. We've just have We've been having some funny uh, house. Here's the thing. Okay. Here, here's what I'll, how I'll start with the married life conversation. And Shane, you're kind of a newbie to this. So. You might, having some uh, trouble over yeah, there with you your know, bottle? Listen up, you know, I, I young some spring saliva, chicken. So I need some <laughs> this is chaos water. right now. <laughs> this is an audio forward medium, and we've done nothing but talk over each other for the last <laughs> 10 seconds. Oh, Here's how I'll we... start. And we can maybe, this can be a jumping off point. Let's jump off. So I live my life in a very, like, non-standard way. Uh, I optimize every moment that I can. Very optimized. <sighs> you know, I'm, I used to be an engineer. Yeah. So it was like yeah. I would want to like keep Zuckerberg. things. And when we would take walks, she want to like look at this tree or this bird or this dog and I'd be like, "Let's just keep walking forward, you know." And <laughs> And um <laughs> this tree or this bird or this dog. <laughs> this is uh which Shane and I were talking Let's about this moving. recently. We were like how the podcast is just going to become a show where we find out how insane Stephen <laughs> is. <laughs> And, That's funny because uh, when Sarah and I go on walks, we stop at all the flowers. And well, yeah, like, look at this one. That's the whole thing: stop and smell the roses. Yeah, we don't yeah. smell them always, but you know, we're always looking at critters and flowers. And I plants. never did that, yeah. and and now uh, now you're learning to do that. I'm learning to be a human through my wife. That's it's good. Amazing. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Like sh- yesterday, she <laughs> saw an injured hummingbird. Oh. And I I would probably be like. Move on. Keep it moving. Kill it. Snap did you, its neck. Did you shoot it? Steven just grabs it. <laughs> I fixed it. That honestly, that might be a better than what would end up happening to that bird, though. Where they'll live like, <laughs> they'll live like a, a, a long and painful death, and some animal will come and eat them. Well, look, it's all um, part of the circle of life. You have to find beauty in that, you know. Right. If Steven think. lived on a ranch, anytime a horse broke its ankle, he would go. Yeah. He would just he would just be like dibs, oh, shoot dibs. it in the head, dibs, dibs. <laughs> this is not that's not who I am. Stop it. This is slander. <laughs> I will sue you for it. <laughs> but Tammy brought the bird to a rehab center and yeah. you know, to the vet and, and did it, they shoot it in the head there? And that's like you know a reminder of why I love her so much because she cares about the hunting hummingbirds yeah. and you know I don't know I I, I realize now that. Even like getting dogs, I was like, "That are, is this like a good use of my time? Like I'm wasting my money, my t- like my time on like a little a- alien." <laughs> and uh, after two years, I'm like, I can't imagine living without them. But I would never have gotten dogs if not for Tammy. One thing I think is fun is um, learning the calls of certain birds because then you see them all the time. Here's here's the bird. Oh, look at that little fella. This guy. Oh Very wow! Cute really beak. colorful. It's, like long... it's got like a pink head. Listener, if you're if you, we'll put this in the podcast. Give it a sugar water. Yeah. We'll put it over. It looks really nice. A uh, th- fun thing to do is I I did this in Illinois because there are cardinals in Illinois. And cardinals are beautiful, beautiful red. You, I don't know if we've got them out here in California. Do we have cardinals? No. Beautiful bird, but they have a very distinctive call. And every time, what's I it sound see- like? Um, that's pretty good. Oh, that's yeah. really that's good. Actually pretty good. Um, but you would. Uh, I mean, I don't know what it sounds like, but but it would be like. And then they do a weep, 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 usually like 12 times or so. Yeah. Uh, but you, uh, so every time I would see one, I'd be like, wow, a cardinal. But it was very few and far between. But then once you learn to know what they sound like, you would see them. I would see them all the time because mm. I'd be like, oh, there's a cardinal nearby. Where is it? You'd spot it. Yeah. Same goes with hummingbirds. They have a very distinctive little chirp trill that when I moved to California, I'd see a hummingbird and be like, oh, my God, that's crazy. And ever then I very quickly learned specifically what their little trill sounds like and trill now, yeah it's like a very isn't that like a hip-hop phrase i mean it's also just a word um <laughs> but like uh, the hair in your belly button what guys Happy i'm talking trail. Uh, <laughs> but uh anyway i don't know i was trying to just learn learn bird noises all right <laughs> this is a good time to take another break yeah. <laughs> and we're back i actually am curious the bird thing maybe got me thinking if there was one animal that you could actually see in person, like in the wild, what would it be? I know, I know right I, away. I know mine. Oh, wow, you know right away. I had yeah. to think about mine. What is yours? 
What? <laughs> oh, I thought I was going to sneeze. That oh, looked like you... something else, and I'm going to make sure to zoom in on your <laughs> no, face no, it looked like for a the sloth. video podcast. Like you were like imitating a sloth because you no, were going to sneeze. Slow. Slow. Well, Steven, I want to know yours first. Well, mine is a, mine is I'm cheating. Is that okay? What? <laughs> <laughs> Different topic entirely. <laughs> I was about to say. I want to see uh, Capybara. And capybaras are known to be like the most friendly animals. Let me see what this. I don't know what that. So looks capybara like. with like a bird. Look it up. Oh, with like a bird on like top. Like a bird of on it. top. I want to see like like friends, animal Capy friends. Yeah. Lara. I saw a video of a monkey giving a cat a hug. Look, capybara and bird. <laughs> that is bigger than I expected. It's, it's like, like Timon a dog. and Pumbaa. Like yeah. I mean, I know Pumbaa is a warthog, but I mean, kind of looks like you it. to put in the podcast. Thank you. That'd be like Shane and I if we were animals. That's right. Uh, I'd like to see a blue whale. A blue whale. The, I mean, the largest mammal in existence. Yeah, I know. It would be incredible. You could do that. I think it's pretty hard to do that. Isn't it? There's like whale watching all around. Like No, like I want to dive. I want to be swimming alongside one. Okay, that's a, a lot different. Than well, I'm telling you what I would want. You want to oh, die? Jesus. Your last dying. Dive, no, dive, dive, dive. dive. I don't want to die next to one. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I want to die next to one. be able to say one. hard sell for Sarah there. <laughs> uh, I need to die next to a blue whale. It's my wish. <laughs> Um, I'm very, very excited for the third and final season. I think it's the final season of Planet Earth that's coming out. I love Planet Earth. David Attenborough is doing the narration for it, and I think he's 98 at this point. You ever watch Planet Earth? Is that- With Snoop Dogg? Is that Snoop? It's pretty good. Okay. It's very fun. I remember when they ported the first season of Planet Earth over to the US, and they swapped out. Who did they- They swapped out David Attenborough's narration, I think- they got Oprah to narrate it. And no disrespect to Oprah, but you can't do that. Because you got David Attenborough being like, the blue whale. Look at her beautiful big And sometimes body. he'll start to seem like, oh, look at this. He's so it's just very cheeky. the wonder of it all. Yeah. I also really like that uh series with dinosaurs that, that treat them as if it was like prehistoric kinda, planet or something. Good. I watched a little bit of it, not it's, the whole thing. It's very fun. That actually came out when I was working on the uh the dinosaur episode of puppet history really like yeah because we season two no season five of pre prehistoric planet i think it only has two seasons no. oh maybe i'm thinking of a different one there was a dinosaur one on apple tv that's the one i'm talking about okay yeah. there has been other ones though like walking with the dinosaurs and stuff like that maybe that's the one i'm thinking of uh but for me the animal probably would be a gorilla mm. well you can see that you've seen that not well, in the wild oh in, in the, the wild. wild in the wild because like it's different. I feel like if they didn't know, I just want to be watching and them not knowing I'm watching. I've got a group text with two of my friends called Ape Chat, and we just share videos. Oh, of dude, monkeys. you should get me in that. I'd you want like, to join? I'd like to join that. I'll add you right add now. Add me right now. Okay. Don't, don't just give me lip service. Okay. Put me in the chat. I think I got something this morning. Let, let me, me see. see. Let me see Chimp. I want to see Chimp. Show Chimp. It's just videos and photos of. Look, that's. I got a message at 9:54 a.m. Uh, so that's today. <laughs> <laughs> That's the latest. It's like that. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's good. That funny meme you showed me of uh, <laughs> of Killian Murphy and uh, Oppenheimer when he's sitting, kind of like I'm sitting in this chair, except he's naked. And it's a uh, what was the comment chain? It was like, why are you sitting like that? Afraid to show pig. Yeah, show pig. I I would love to see a gorilla. They're just majestic creatures. But anyways, it's probably a gorilla for me. Not a bear. No, no, definitely not a bear. Everyone knows who everyone who knows me knows that bears are the thing I'm the most scared of. But if you saw them and you were hidden, you'd be fine. Uh, no, I don't think you'd be fine. I I I recommend. I don't know who recommended this to us, and we could close with this. Uh, I think it was our sound guy Ben, who had mentioned there was a podcast of a guy detailing what it was like to be mauled by a grizzly bear. And it is the most harrowing piece of content I have ever listened to. I highly recommend it. If you have time, but you know, go, go check it out after this. He, he was mauled it by- It is gnarly. He was it, mauled by the bear. Yes. And it is really gross, graphic, and it's an audio only medium. And I'm telling the, you- I think the podcast is called- This is actually happening. This is actually happening. I, yeah. I highly recommend Jeez. it. But the one thing I will say about it is it's strangely inspiring- and you'll see what I mean. You just got to get through it to get to the end. I just listened to it again on a on a road trip to with my friends over to uh, to Havasu. Mm -hmm. And speaking of Havasu, we could actually close on this. Did go to Culver's. Oh, mm -hmm. did we talk about this in the last podcast? We did not. We, we talked about me going, and I would give my review. And I have to say, I was a little harsh on it before. Yeah. Now the burger. Here's the thing. I can see you 
not being like, this is the best burger I've ever had. Because I don't think it's the best burger I've ever had. Yeah. I, I just like it as a restaurant. So when you were so harsh on it, I thought, well, maybe something wasn't right there. It's possible. I will. It's say a nice experience all around. The burger was way better this time. It still is like very okay. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have it again. I'll say that the butter burger. Well, like However, the chicken tenders there, you weren't raving about this, but the no. folks I was with. Though, the last time were, I remember you saying you enjoyed the chicken tenders. I did. You kind of forgot thought, about I them. I thought they were good, yeah. but they weren't like amazing, mm -hmm. so, which may, uh, further illustrates the point that clearly I had a bad batch. But uh, my friend said, you got to try the chicken tenders because there's a chicken tender and there's a buffalo chicken tender. And I think I do have a picture of it, so I could put that up right now. But good. Um, for those of you who are watching the video version of this podcast, I have to say... Fast food tender wise, it is far and away the best fast food tender I have ever had. It is wow. a magical thing mm. they're doing over there. Wow. I, I think I've had them before. Dude, it's just it not is a go to for me. So good. Wow, I like, love to hear that. It's got that crazy thing where Well now, can you put them up against Popeye's tenders? Oh, they shit on Popeye's tenders. No, no, no. No, no. dude, I'm telling you, I am telling they are really, really good. In fact, mm. even in the pantheon of tenders that aren't fast food, like and now we're moving into like uh, you know Disneyland tenders or like I had these tenders at Planet Hollywood they were really good I have a big chicken tender head <sighs> you're, I you're, love you're, you're calling your own taste into question oh uh, dude you're I love talking up Planet Hollywood dude, chicken go tenders. go try Planet Hollywood I'm not going tenders. to Planet Hollywood I'm telling you where is good. a Planet Hollywood I went to one in Orlando okay. for my bachelor party and if you were there because you came late to the bachelor party you would know I didn't go to Planet you, Hollywood you I got that. there as you guys were leaving to Planet Hollywood, and that's I was right. Checking into the hotel, you missed out on a great tender. Experience. And you were like, "Meet us at Planet Hollywood." I was like, "I'll meet you guys after." <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. The, I don't need to see Sylvester Stallone's used Q-tips. <laughs> Dude, the thing is, the tenders they were really good. However, Culver's I think are better than them. Uh, and I, I do have like a tender ranking because I love chicken tenders. There's nothing better than poolside tenders. You know, if you're at a pool at a hotel, yeah, I love. Ten I, I'm I'm with you. I love tenders. Um, but I have to say, this might. It's definitely top three. It's definitely the best wow. fast food tender I've ever had. It has this thing where chicken tenders for me, my issue with them when they're bad is- so This is our, the- This is the closer. <laughs> this is the closer. <laughs> Look, everyone- it feels like we're just ramping everybody up. Everybody was wondering what, what what I thought about Culver's. Yeah, okay. Because we had teased it so efficiently the, uh, the, uh, the last episode. I mean, I'm thrilled to hear positive things about it. But the thing about tenders though, okay. is you want a crunch on the outside, you a do. crunchy batter. Yeah. But what I find is that sometimes when you have the crunchy batter, the inside is too dry. No, you want a crunch and you want the moist. And this had the maximum amount of moisture while still being very crunchy on I'd the outside to, to the point where I was confused at how they had accomplished it. And, the, and I the, love, I've seen you eat food before and then get confused about how, what you like about it. Yeah. In the moment where you're like, it's <laughs> 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 always very funny. And the buffalo tender is really good as well. I mean, I just, if, you, if you're near Culver's, head on over, get the chicken tenders. You won't regret it. And uh, don't get the butter burger though, because it's, it's- Did you get any uh, fried cheese curds? No, we didn't get any cheese curds. That's a crime. They're they're incredible. But we did get uh, custard. I got a root beer float with custard. They got a great. The they got great and custard. the custard was incredible. Yeah. I have yeah. to say, that's good root beer. What too. I go for. Good root beer <clears throat> and a really great root beer float. And I'm a I'm a floatman. You know this. You're yeah, a floatman too. You. I'm a floatman. I'm a floatman like the the co-host before me and the co-host before him. You're not a floatman. No, Stephen. No, we that's don't need to get into that. But no, not a I I wonder if there's I, mediocre have... fries. Mediocre fries. I will say Aren't that. Aren't they crinkle cut? Uh, crinkle cut. I don't recall what they were. I just didn't like them that much. I think I thought they were okay. I think I they're didn't... fine crinkle cuts. I think they're quite fine. I thought they were okay. I think they're quite fine. I think everything was also overshadowed by how good the tender was and the custard. The custard was also quite good. Fries are uh, there's a low bar of entry for. Well, there's a. I don't know. I the best fries in the world. I'm not like, wow. You know, you a fry has to be hot, nice and crispy, good consistency. Like when it comes to crinkle cut fries, there's very little you can do wrong. Have we done fries yet on Top Five Beatdown? No, we haven't. We gotta do that. That oh. sounds like a good app. Well, why yeah. don't we end this episode? Okay. Well, that's a good that's a good spot to wrap it up. Uh, thank you guys for listening to this episode of Pod Watcher. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to us. Pod Watcher. Uh, Pod Watcher. Pod Watcher. Pod Watcher. Pod Watcher. That's kind of high. It's it as well in my yeah. head. Yeah. Uh, but make sure you subscribe to us uh, wherever you listen to this podcast. Or if you're watching this on the video version, subscribe to us on the YouTube channel because it does help us out. helps us keep making this show. If oh, you wanna, and I think it you helps can, to rate. Double subscribe. It helps oh, to rate. It also does help to rate. So rate uh, this show if you can. Five stars. Or don't rate it at all. 
five stars five or none stars. at all. That's, that's the metric there. If you don't want to give it five stars, just just keep it to yourself. Um, anyways. Find an old tree <laughs> and whisper into it and then exactly. cover it up with mud. Who the fuck sings that radioactive song? I think Imagine Dragon. Imagine Dragon these nuts on your face. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan! Ah! Nailed it! Oh, yes! Okay. Yeah! How did yeah! you... Yeah! You know what? I had, I had been waiting the entire oh, episode. Oh God, I was waiting. Dude. Wow! And it worked. Wow, you got yeah. my ass, man. Yeah, nice. you got these nutted. No, no. Okay. Wow! Right. Did you actually? Did you actually? I not did see? not know that was coming. Oh my God, I'm so happy, dude. Oh, that's so good. And I, I didn't, I couldn't sneak the other one in. The other one I wanted. Well, save it, save it, save, save it, it for the future. I'll save it for the future. Yeah, it's gonna be hard. That one's gonna be way harder. Well, look, you're up to the task. It seems like God, you have got. <laughs> Me. Episode so we're going out on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you guys later. <laughs> Bye, everybody. You can leave that in there. Yeah. <laughs>